In today's show, the Blazers bring back Kevin Knox, sign another player to a training camp deal, and the roster is finalized? You know, before the other thing happens. Welcome to Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trail Blazers, your daily Portland Trail Blazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, world? It's your past first point guard and Trailblazers reporter, Mike Richmond. You are listening to another episode of Locked On Blazers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube today, or excuse me, this week, rather, is the final week of three days a week. Starting September 18th, we're back five days a week, Monday through Friday, wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube all season long, bringing you daily weekday coverage of the Portland Trailblazers. So tell your friends about the show. It's Locked On Blazers. Your team every day. The season is here, and we're coming back. The the today show. If you're if you're a regular listener, was supposed to be the beginning of our of our player previews, a, a capsule episodes on each player on the roster leading up to training camp and the start of the regular season. But the Blazers made some moves on Sunday, and so we're going to talk about some newsy stuff. I I believe as as we stand here, as I'm recording this Sunday afternoon, uh, September 10th, that the Blazers roster is is quote unquote. Big, giant, biggest quotation marks you can possibly imagine, quote unquote, finalized. You know, that is until they decide what to do with Damian Lillard. But if if they don't trade Dame before the start of the regular season and they go into the regular season, this is the crew they're going to run with. And I'll explain why I believe that to be the case as we get deeper into the episode. But I, I think this is it. They're at 14 guaranteed contracts and this looks like the crew. And they're at 14, or 14 NBA contracts, rather, Uh partial guarantees and, and whatnot, but 14 NBA contracts because, according to Shams Trani of The Athletic, the Blazers are bringing back Kevin Knox. Welcome home, Kevin. 6'7", uh, six, 6'8", six, wing with some size, going to you know play a little 3 and 4. Came Played for the Blazers after the trade deadline. Came over as part of a four-team deal. He was he, he was on the Pistons to begin the season. He comes to Portland in the deal that sent Gary Payton to Golden State, James Wiseman to uh, James Wiseman to Detroit, and eventually Sadiq Bay to eventually same same deal. It's not like he traveled later. Sadiq Bay to the Atlanta Hawks. Blazers got a bunch of second round picks in the hall as well. Uh, Knox played in 21 games after coming over at the trade deadline, including four starts, 17 minutes, uh, 17.1 minutes if you want to get into it for the Blazers. Eight and a half points, 3.3 boards, shot 44% from the floor, 34. One percent from three, seventy-four percent from the stripe. Um, he had a team option for three million bucks that was uh, that was due to him in June. The Blazers chose not to exercise that. He entered free agency, didn't sign anywhere. Now he comes back to the Blazers. Uh, according to uh, Trani of the Athletic, the Blazers signed him to a one-year deal. Got to assume it's a one-year minimum deal. We'll find out on guarantees and all that. Uh, if, if you know if you're scoring at home, the if even a fully non-guaranteed deal guarantees if you're on the roster it passed in january so there's a you know we'll see what Knox en- or ends up with but he 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 kind of took a haircut about a million bucks from player option to to a minimum deal on a one-year deal um Knox is going to compete for minutes at the forward spots like i said he's going to play a little bit of three a little bit of four i i um, I think I liked him less than a lot of Blazer fans in his stint here in those 21 games. Uh, he didn't. He wasn't a super huge part of the of the plan um, when they first made the, the deal. Like he was, he was, he was not playing um, with. He's not a regular part of the rotation when he first came over. And then at the end of the year, when when like things kind of changed, he had some monster games. He had 24 in that magical tank loss to San Antonio, the sort of um, the, the, the game the Blazers had to lose, and the Spurs won, and then were rewarded Victor Wembanyama for karma reasons. Actually, I think it's for math and lottery reasons, but maybe karma as well. Um, he also had 30 against the Clippers in the penultimate game of the season. Like it was, When they kind of let Kevin Knox go he had some monster nights but those are like really it's just like, those games aren't a great judge of who guys are Kevin Knox is big he's athletic um I don't I, I think the shooting is a little bit questionable for me he's a career 34% shooter and it's like a little below league average league average is right around 36% the last couple seasons uh if, if he was a better shooter I think he could do some stuff he's got the size and the athleticism to be um to have some tools he's still 24 like he can he can get better but he's a fringe roster guy and that's why he's signing a minimum deal in September because he's like truly on the fringe of the roster um I think maybe a better way to sort of look at his splits as to say, okay, 21 games, 
eight and three is that in the first 16 games before things really changed for the Blazers, like last, last, last five, he played a bunch, but, um, but he first 16 games was before they shut Damian Lillard down and before they shut Amphrey Simons down in, in March, uh, March 22nd was kind of when the Blazers season like really took a turn and they kind of, um, punted on the last 10 games a fairly aggressively I don't know if you've paid attention but they um they were non-competitive in a very intentional way I think there's a word for that it starts with a t but prior to that um t- prior prior to the tank off Knox appeared in 11 of 16 games picked up five DNPs and he averaged he played just seven minutes a night averaged three and one and a half like I don't think averages matter but the minutes like he just didn't, didn't play that much and then at the end of the year, he played a lot. If you're scoring at home, they went three and eight in those games that uh, that Kevin Knox appeared in uh, prior when when Dame was still an active player. They weren't a very good team. It had nothing to do with Kevin Knox. He was playing some garbage time minutes in those when the games were decided, so his appearances weren't like inf- affecting the the outcome or anything like that. But I I think he was you know he was kind of outside the plan. He was a, he was not an afterthought is maybe a mean word, but I mean that as like when they traded for him, they wanted the second round picks back as ammunition. And they said, yeah, we'll take a flyer on Knox. Like, that's great. I think they saw enough to say, yeah, let's bring him back. And as the roster remains kind of not even in flux, just kind of like uncertain with, they're willing to take flyers on guys, I guess. And, and, and Knox showed them enough to take a flyer and he's in, you know, he's unemployed in September. And if you can get a minimum guy who's already been in your system and, and knows some stuff and you can say, Hey, we kind of do need some help at the, at the four um, spot or three and four spot. Like, yeah, c- come in, come play. And when we'll see what we do, I think this is a low risk thing. This isn't like, I don't think Kevin Knox signing Kevin Knox is like a, a big deal. It is the 14th contract NBA contract. And we'll talk about that and more at the close in the third segment to close the show. Um, but this is, you know, a low risk, low risk option. I think, like I said, I think other people probably liked Kevin Knox more than I did. So if you are really excited, I think Kevin Knox has great potential cool. You're not the first person to, to be more excited than me. Um, I'm just like putting my cards on the table. I, I, I think this dude is like a 13th, 14th guy. And then the Blazers are adding him as a 13th, 14th guy and no harm, no foul. Um, if he pops, it's a, it's, there's some real value. He's young. He has some tools. Maybe he gets there. If he doesn't, no real risk on, on a minimum, but the Blazers roster looks complete of sorts, uh, assuming that they don't make any other moves and any other moves would be the big one. The Blazers also signed another player to an exhibit 10 deal. George Condit joins the program, joins the Blazers. Um, an E10 deal, we'll talk about what an E10 deal means and why George Condit is headed for the Rip City remix as the G League team kind of comes a little bit into focus. That's what we'll do in the second segment. Before we do that, I want to tell you about Ibotta. Look, you're going to buy stuff anyways. That, that's what you're going to do. Life, life is going to force you to buy things. So why not get some cash back when you're out there spending your hard-earned money just by using I. It gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. It's super simple to use. You either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and you get your cash back. It's that easy. The average I bought user earns $120 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire grocery trip or you could use that cash back to buy, you know, an upgrade on a flight you've been eyeing or tickets to a game you want to go to or take yourself out to a fancy dinner that you've been craving. Other apps are going to give you points that don't really amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash that you can just send to your bank account. You can get sent to your PayPal. You can get as gift cards. And you earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers too when you start with Ibotta. So that's Lowe's and Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. If you're buying stuff, use Ibotta. Right now, Ibotta is offering my listeners $5 just for trying their service. Use the code LOCKED when you register for Ibotta. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use that code LOCKED. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google Play or App Store and use that code LOCKED locked all right so kevin knox makes it 14 and george condit makes it four the blazers now have four players signed to exhibit 10 deals after according to adrian wojanowski signing george condit to an exhibit 10 deal on sunday september 10th an e10 deal is like a training camp contract um what it is is earmarked bonus for players if they if they sign with the g league team 
um, and play X number of games. I believe it's 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 30 appearances. Um, play with the G League team. It might be less than that. It's it's an, it's a but it's you hit a threshold for appearances in the G League or you sign a two way contract. There's a there's bonus money involved. It is essentially a training camp deal. Occasionally, it is a path to a to a full contract, but for the most part, and Woj reported this in his tweet that this is a path to the G League. This is a way to say we want you on our G League on our G League team. We you know we 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 value you as part of our minor league program. Come to camp. We'll give you a little bit of bonus for agreeing to come to camp and not going anywhere else. The you know it doesn't come out of the salary cap. It's not a, it's not a it's just it's it's money you can it's money you can earmark for um, a certain a certain uh, players with a certain level of experience et cetera et cetera. E ten deal um, is like you know it's uh, it is mostly used on players like Condit. Condit played four years at Iowa State and went undrafted in 2022. Uh, played professionally in Puerto Rico in 2022. And then last season, he played professionally in Greece where he averaged nine and a half points and six and a half rebounds. He's a 6'10 big man, um, you know, li- maybe listed as a center. I've seen some people list him at seven at seven feet tall. A couple services have him at 6'10". I'm going to guess he's a little bit shorter, uh, but like we'll, the height to me is, is listed height is to me is maybe not important. He's a big man. He's a center. Um, and you know, he's, he doesn't have G league experience. Like he's been playing professionally out of college for, he's, he's, he's 23 years old. Uh, he's been out of college for a couple years and, and playing professionally. And now he comes over to join, you know, to, to be involved in the Blazers training camp and then to probably head to the Rip City Remix, the Blazers G League affiliate. He is one of four guys who are on E10 deals, along with Ashton Hagens, uh, who signed a, a, a E10 deal in August, and then Malachi Smith and Antoine Davis, two guards, uh, Malachi Smith from Gonzaga and uh, Antoine Davis from Detroit Mercy, who signed E10 deals ahead of ahead of Summer League uh, back in June. Like, they've, they've been in the program for a long time. You're kind of seeing the Blazers... Uh, G League team take shape. Um, we'll see how how the roster gets finalized, but Hagens, Smith, Davis, uh, now George Condit, all involved in, all likely to be involved in in sort of what the G League looks like. I I think this is you know we're not going to spend I'm not going to spend a ton of time hammering the the importance of an E10 deal, but I think the Blazers, um, you know, you, you kind of see the 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 outline of what they're doing right um they are they are committed to staying young they're taking flyers on guys i mentioned this in a previous episode it's like if they do sign a big man it's probably someone outside of the nba that i don't know i didn't didn't know george condit until i saw his name i found out he's george condit the fourth uh went to high school in chicago and like this is this is what i know about him from reading his bio right like so i'm not going to pretend to um have sort of like deep takes about him but you could see it's like uh, they got some intriguing, you know, guards who played high-level basketball in, in in Malachi Smith and Ashton Higgins. They've got Antoine Davis, who was killing it in low-level basketball as, as a really high-level score at Detroit Mercy. And now they get a big man to kind of f- continue to fill out that roster. And 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 you get players in your, um, you know, in your developmental system, in your G League team to like see if you can find guys that pop, right? See if you can like I mentioned this in a previous episode. You're kind of just trying to find role players, right? Maybe George Conant ends up being a, a third center, right? And then you don't need that. You can call him up, sign him to a two-way contract, um, and and then he can, you know, or or, or whatever it is, maybe sign him to a real deal, but sign him to a two-way contract and then have him be part of the NBA plan if he, if he develops. And if not, you keep him in the G League and you continue to go from there. Importantly, the Blazers have two two-way spots filled and there is a third two-way spot this year. And the Blazers have not, as of right now, filled that spot. Spot. So while, you know, Condit uh, offers a need, right? They don't have many bigs on the roster, but it's Yus Nurkic and Moses Brown and Ibu Baji and John Butler Jr. is 6, 10, 7 feet tall, but he's um, it's like a three, <laughs> like a, he's small forward, just a very tall person. Um, and so like he, you know, seems to check a box of like they could use some more developmental centers, but this is not, an E10 deal is not, an indicator that someone is going to make the roster it's these are earmarked for continuing to use the g league team i I think um the blazers this year because they're particularly young can get some value out of the g league because what they're trying to do over the next one to however long it takes four seasons is continue to find nba level players you take flyers on guys to see if you can find NBA level players. When you're in a sort of different mode of team building this has less value when you're in the mode that they're in which is um they haven't really 
done this, but they are at some point going to sort of start over with with a new era. Um, you know, you you have a little more runway to see if it works. This is if if Knox is sort of a low risk deal, this is a no risk deal. This is hey, come play in the G League. If you're if you're an NBA role player, we can figure out a way to get you there. If not. At least, you know, this is someone who played, you know, playing professional basketball and is NBA size and no, no, um, there's very, there's absolutely zero downside to, to a deal like this. But I mentioned this a couple times and I know I'll say it again here. Blazers rosters done. I think, I think this is what the group is. Obviously they could trade Dame at any point here. Um, I I've mentioned this a lot on the show and I'll say it again here. I do not think the Blazers have any incentive to, negotiate with any suitors and specifically the Miami Heat, but any suitors until you get to about a week before training camp. And then you got to look yourself in the mirror and say, do we really want to bring Damian Lillard back in under these circumstances or do we want to find a deal and get it done? Blazers have been, you know, Joe Cronin's word has been that he's willing to be patient. Um, He said some other stuff maybe throughout uh, his time behind the microphone that has not necessarily come to fruition. So, uh, you know, choose your own adventure on what you want to believe. But but I I trust him that he's willing to be patient for sure. Um, So assuming that he's going to be patient, the roster is what it is. 14 players, an empty two-way spot, and I think... If they don't do anything, this is the group. Let's talk about that to close the show. Join me in the third segment, won't you? Still a pass first point guard. Still Mike Richmond. Still listening to Locked On Blazers. Blazers roster looks like it's done to me. Done to me. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned a kajillion times in this episode, the big thing could shake it up and then it would be not done any longer. But for now, assuming nothing changes between now and opening night about a month from now, a little over a month from now, this is the crew. This is the crew. This is the crew. Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons, Matisse Thibel, Jeremy Grant, Yusuf Nurkic, your presumed starting lineup. I'd say almost certainly your presumed starting lineup. Scoot Henderson, Shaden Sharp. Zier Little, Kevin Knox, Moses Brown, uh, Jabari Walker, Chris Murray, Keon Johnson, Ryan Rupert. That's your 14 guys. An NBA roster is full at 15. You can you can carry 15 during the regular season, but I do not believe, as the Blazers are currently constructed, that they will carry 15, and here is why. Uh, we haven't seen the final um, money <laughs> Uh, on like the, the the specifics is what the word I'm looking for on the Kevin Knox deal. But assuming that it is the minimum, which it would be weird if it wasn't. So assuming it's the minimum, which it is a minimum deal, I'm certain, but I haven't, I, do, I can't confirm that. So I'm not going to just, uh, uh, I'm a know it some, not a know it all. I'm going to, I'll, t- I'll tell you what I don't know. I don't know the specifics of it. So assuming that it is a minimum deal, the Blazers are about a million and some change and 1.3 million by my rough math, back of the napkin math up. Other people are much better at CBA stuff than me, but I can read and do a little bit of arithmetic. They're about $1.3 million below the uh, the luxury tax line. So they can't even sign a guy to a minimum contract and stay below that money based on the way minimums co- count, against, uh, the, um, count against the salary cap. So this is it. They're not going to be a tax team this year. They're not going to flirt with being a tax I mean, they're flirting because they uh, because Damian Lord's on a giant contract. Um, that gets more giant soon. Congrats. But like he's on a big deal and, and, and they, you know, signed, signed Jeremy Grant to a big deal and and every time he's making 25 million bucks. But like they're not going to be a tax team this year. They're not going to get above that tax threshold and then have people be able to hold them over a barrel and say, hey, you, you want to get out of the tax? You know, give us some second rounders and we'll take uh, whoever it might be. Keon Johnson off your hands. So I think this is the group. Um they're still, they still have a two-way spot open. They will absolutely fill that, like the way that they're going. Just they're a developmental team. They're, they're going to fill that. Their commitment to the G League team, their commitment to youth, like they're, they're an incredibly young roster, average age under 24, um, even with Dame in tow and, you know, and, 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 and Jeremy Grant. Like they're, they're just super, 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 super young. The team's just, they're a young group. They're going to fill that two-way spot. That doesn't count against the salary cap. It's, 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 it is, it's who gets it, not, not when it gets, you know, it's, it's when and who, not if uh, they will, they will sign that. But otherwise, you know, you throw in Ibu Baji is a two-way guy. John Butler Jr. is a two-way guy. That's your group. That's that. That's the squad. Um, 
it is it will be curious and i think this is this is sort of the question question marky stuff is that moses brown reportedly has guarantees based on um he got a guarantee just for signing and he has a guarantee of making the opening night roster and we don't know kevin knox's guarantee structure otherwise everybody else guaranteed um and so if they were to make a trade they would need to stay under that luxury tax threshold they're going to take back less money than they send out and if they were to bring back you know um i think this is a sort of a, a note i want to make here all summer long the blazers were carrying 12 players and Joe Cronin was saying, well, we're, you know, if we do have to take an imbalanced trade, a, a, a three, a th three players come in, one player goes out. I want to keep, keep those roster spots open. And I read that as like, a, yeah, he's like, he's just, he's eventually going to make this deal as he's continued to add players, right? Like as, as Moses Brown and Kevin Knox has added players, then the sort of just cleanly take back three and send out one is is not as easy. But if these are non guaranteed deals, like if, if if Moses Brown can be can be traded or waived prior to opening nights, it makes the trade still certainly in like easy to pull off by taking back multiple players, not if it's sending folks out. Depending on what Kevin Knox guarantee money is, might be the same situation right so um while i think in general the blazers finalizing the roster as, as as i believe it is like is an indicator that they are are indeed willing to go into the regular season with dame on the roster based on their hedging is maybe i don't know if that's the right word based on the way that they've structured their most recent deals to fill out the final spots in their roster i think the structure of Kevin Knox's will be in some ways, like at least a minor indicator indicates that, yeah, they really are going to move forward with Dame on the roster because they don't want to, they don't want to take a crappy trade in the summer. They think they'll either take the same crappy trade in the, in during the year, or they think that the market will improve, um, whatever it might be or their leverage. And I think the real truth of it is that, it's their only option. Like, even if it's the same in December, they can't they can't capitulate now because they have to hope, right? They have to kind of roll the dice and hope that things get better. If they don't and you end up with the same deal, it's fine. Um, if you're gonna take a bad deal in September and taking also a bad deal the week of Christmas, isn't that isn't that big of a deal? It's a little messy. It was more messy than you want, but it's really not not that big of a deal. But um I had mentioned on a previous show, and I want to bring it up here, is like finalizing the roster would be a good indicator that the Blazers were indeed done negotiating. I don't think they've really begun to negotiate. I think the week before the season, before training camp starts, training camp is, media day is October 2nd. Training camp's going to open October 3rd in Santa Barbara. Uh, they're, they're going back to Cali. Uh, but, you know, when we get in the next two weeks, uh, teams, guys are back. Uh, typically, Labor Day is is kind of when veterans start trickling back into their NBA markets. Uh, you know, if you have, uh, for executives, they're, they're back from their sacred August vacations and they're back to having uh, busy jobs running an NBA team. So like it's here, the season, that's like why we're going back to five days a week on the, on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's like the season's here and stuff's going to happen. If they were to get a Dame deal done, like I don't think it's, I don't think there's no chance it happens, but the, you know, the movement, the chances for them to discuss will happen right up, you know, deadline spur actions. It'll happen the final week of September when things get a little bit, uh, when the Blazers have to decide what they want to do. I don't think they're going to get like, Harry, but they're going to, the Blazers will have a, their opportunity to make a chance, but if they, or make a decision, but what, what, what they want to do. If not, this is the crew. Dame Ant, Tease, JG and Nurk, Scoot, Shea, Nas, Kevin Knox, Moses Brown, Keon Johnson, Ryan Rupert, Chris Murray, Jabari Walker. Get excited. That's like a, that's like a 26 win team. Um, <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to have fun covering this team all year. I'm going to tease them a little bit because uh, they're going to lose some games. But I'm, I'm, I'm excited for real basketball to come back and talk about real basketball things. I think this is... I think this is the roster. Um, we will see what happens. And we've got... Um, a few weeks here for the Blazers to kind of decide whether they are going to make the big move or they're going to wait and eventually make the big move down the line. But with Kevin Knox in tow, I'd say we're, I don't know, half a percent more likely that Dame is on the roster on opening night. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. We really will start our player preview capsules. You listen to Monday, September 11th show. Uh, Wednesday, Jeremy Grant, our first of the player previews running up through the season, running up to the season. 
get excited. Tell your friends. Available wherever you got podcasts. Also on YouTube. Season's back. Lockdown Blazers is about to be back in full swing. If you've enjoyed the podcast and you're listening to this one, do me a favor. Tell your pals about it. All right. I appreciate you listening. I'll talk to you soon.